it's time to review the new Childish Gambino album, Awaken My Love. The one that I know quite a few people have been asking for, so here it is. Childish Gambino is the stage name of Donald Glover, who I have been very fond of in terms of his work as an actor and a comedian, but perhaps not so much as a rapper. You know, he does put out some good songs every now and then. I have enjoyed a couple of songs off albums like Camp and Because the Internet, but uh, he has never managed to really hold my interest for a full album. However, the lead singles to this new album pretty much surprised everyone, not just because it was a new Childish Gambino album, but also because it was uh, a completely different direction from the hip-hop that we had come to know him for. Instead, this time he had been going down a route that was a little more funkadelic-inspired, more R&B, psychedelic, uh, funk, soul, and, and definitely leaning towards showing off just how you know, skillful he is as a singer as well, which he had done on his last EP, the Kawa I think it's the Kawaii EP, and there was like one track on there that really stood out to me, and that was the track Sober, which I actually really enjoyed because it was showing off his singing voice, which I thought was pretty cool, um, and now this new album comes around, and I was like pretty interested to see how he could take this Funkadelic inspired sound and make it his own, and I'll be honest, when I first listened to it, I was kind of on the fence about it because whilst I had enjoyed the the lead singles Red Bone and Me and Your Mama, the rest of the album seemed to just take that funkadelic style and not really do much with it. It didn't feel quite as rich or as fulfilling as the the two lead singles. Me and Your Mama, that was the definition of fulfilling. It had the sense of urgency, it was explosive, it had these raspy James Brown inspired vocals. It was pretty epic, to be honest. I even got a bit of a King Crimson vibe there. And then you've got the track Redbone, which was like a much more chill and more smooth song there. I love the little melody it starts off with. And it still managed to be extremely fulfilling, even despite how um, less explosive it was as a track. I feel like everything else took a while to grow on me because it just wasn't clicking, you know? Like, my problem wasn't at all with this new direction, but rather just how he was handling it. There was an occasional impressive moment, like maybe a guitar solo or like a really funky, groovy beat, but like, overall, the whole album just didn't seem to be, you know, popping out to me. It just, it just felt like a very thin attempt at replicating what Funkadelic Maggot Brain Days were like. But then I went to sleep and let the album just kind of marinate with me for a couple of days. Still feel like it was it was trying to channel that funkadelic style a little bit too closely, but there are now still songs on there that I do enjoy. Like the whole first half, fantastic. Boogeyman, Zombies, Riot. The only track here that I didn't like, and, I st and I'm still sticking with this one, California. You've got this great beat, you've got this really sexy, groovy beat, and then suddenly over the top, annoyingly obnoxious, auto-tuned delivery of the vocals, just You know, it just seems very obnoxious and it wasn't very wasn't very fond of it, you know? But I, I think that overall this is this certainly grew on me. Uh, I I would probably give it a 7 out of 10. Before, I was tempted to give it maybe a 5 or a 6, but actually, now that it's grown on me, now that I've warmed up to a lot more of the songs, I've actually, you know, felt like it's more worthy of a 7. And it's gonna sit with different people in different ways, but for me, I'm quite satisfied with it, so... I think it's I think it's a pretty cool change of direction and a very cool execution at that. 